sense of unease that was settling in the pit of my stomach. Despite my instincts screaming at me to avoid interacting with him any further, I plastered on a polite smile and asked him what he would like to order. His response was peculiar, as he simply requested a cup of black coffee. No sugar, no cream, just plain black coffee. As I prepared his drink, I couldn't shake the feeling of his eyes boring into the back of my head, as if he was scrutinizing every move I made with an intensity that sent shivers down my spine. Handing him his coffee, I tried to maintain a professional demeanor, but I couldn't help but notice how his smile never wavered, remaining fixed in that unnatural position. It was as if his facial muscles were frozen in that unsettling grin, making me wonder if it was genuine or merely a facade to hide something darker lurking beneath the surface. As Ivan took the cup from my trembling hands, his fingers brushed against mine, sending a jolt of cold dread coursing through me. I watched in silence as he took a slow sip of his coffee, his gaze never leaving mine. The seconds stretched into an eternity as we stood there, locked in a silent exchange that seemed to transcend mere words. I felt a primal urge to flee, to escape the suffocating atmosphere that seemed to thicken with each passing moment. Yet, something held me rooted to the spot, unable to tear my gaze away from his piercing stare. Finally, Ivan broke the silence, his voice soft yet laced with an underlying menace that sent a chill down my spine. You have a lovely establishment here, he remarked, his smile widening ever so slightly. It would be a shame if anything were to happen to it. His words hung in the air like a dark omen, and I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. With a curt nod, Ivan turned on his heel and disappeared into the night, leaving me alone with my thoughts and a sense of impending doom that refused to dissipate. As I locked up the coffee stand for the night, I couldn't shake the feeling that Ivan's visit was just the beginning of something far more sinister lurking in the shadows, waiting to reveal itself when I least expected it. Entirely convinced it would keep him out for long, my hands were trembling as I fumbled to shut off the lights and hurry out to my car. Every instinct in my body screamed at me to get as far away from that place as possible. But I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, of being hunted. That night, sleep eluded me as I tossed and turned. The image of Ivan's sinister smile burned into my mind's eye. With each passing hour, the darkness outside seemed to press closer suffocating me with its oppressive weight. I couldn't shake the feeling that Ivan was out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. The next day dawned gray and foreboding, the air heavy with the promise of impending doom. Despite my growing sense of dread, I forced myself to go to work, to face whatever horrors awaited me at the coffee stand. As the day wore on, my nerves were stretched to the breaking point, every shadow morphing into a potential threat, every sound sending a jolt of fear coursing through my veins. At 6.45 p.m., the familiar sense of impending doom settled over me like a shroud as I prepared to close the stand once again. With trembling hands, I locked up the doors and windows, casting anxious glances over my shoulder with each click of the lock. 
every instinct screamed at me to run, to flee this cursed place and never look back. But I knew deep down that there was no escaping the darkness that had enveloped me. As the minutes ticked by, the tension in the air grew thicker, suffocating me with its oppressive weight. And then, just as I feared, I saw him, even standing outside the coffee stand with that same predatory grin plastered across his face. My heart hammered in my chest as I watched him approach, his footsteps echoing like a death knell in the silence of the night. I wanted to scream, to run, to do anything to escape the clutches of this malevolent force that seemed hell-bent on destroying me. But I was frozen in place, paralyzed by fear, as Ivan drew closer and closer, his eyes burning with an intensity that sent shivers down my spine. And then, just as suddenly as he had appeared, Ivan was gone, disappearing into the darkness without a trace, but I knew deep down that he would be back, that this was only the beginning of a nightmare that would haunt me for the rest of my days, for Ivan was not just a man. He was something far more sinister, a harbinger of darkness and despair that would stop at nothing to claim me as his own and try as I might to escape. I knew that there was no running from the horrors that lurked in the shadows, waiting to drag me down into the abyss, feel my heart pounding in my chest as I stood there, trembling with fear and uncertainty. Ivan's words echoed in my mind, sending chills down my spine. He believed I was his wife, and he seemed willing to stop at nothing to make that twisted fantasy a reality. I glanced down at the passport clutched tightly in my hand, feeling a surge of panic rising within me. This was no ordinary encounter. Ivan was not just a stranger passing through. He was a threat, a danger lurking in the shadows, waiting to pounce when I least expected it. With trembling hands, I reached for my phone, my fingers fumbling over the screen as I dialed 911. I knew I needed help, and I needed it fast before Ivan returned, before he had the chance to carry out whatever twisted plans he had in store for me. As I waited for the police to arrive, I couldn't shake the feeling of impending doom that hung heavy in the air. Every sound seemed magnified every shadow morphing into a potential threat. I felt like a trapped animal, helpless and vulnerable in the face of an unseen enemy. When the police finally arrived, I recounted the harrowing events of the past few days, my voice trembling with fear and exhaustion. They assured me they would do everything in their power to apprehend Ivan and keep me safe. But deep down, I knew that this was far from over. As I sat alone in the coffee stand, waiting for the police to finish their investigation, I couldn't help but feel a sense of dread wash over me. Even may have disappeared for now, but I knew that he would be back. That this was only the beginning of a nightmare that would haunt me for the rest of my days and try as I might to escape. I knew that there was no running from the darkness that had enveloped my life, threatening to consume me whole. Orders for me to call the police and to not move an inch. My hands were shaking violently as I fumbled for my phone, my mind racing with a million thoughts and fears. With trembling fingers, I managed to dial 911, my voice barely above a whisper as I relayed the terrifying situation unfolding before me. As I waited for help to arrive, I watched in horror as Jonathan struggled to keep Ivan pinned to the ground, 
his grip tightening with every passing second. Ivan thrashed and fought against him. His wild eyes filled with a primal rage that sent a shiver down my spine. Minutes felt like hours as I cowered inside the coffee stand. The sounds of the struggle outside echoing in my ears like a macabre symphony of terror. Every fiber of my being screamed at me to run, to flee this nightmare and never look back. But I knew that I couldn't leave Jonathan to face this danger alone. Finally, the sound of approaching sirens pierced the air, signaling the arrival of the police, with a sense of relief washing over me. I rushed outside to meet them, my heart pounding in my chest as I watched them take Ivan into custody. As the adrenaline began to fade, I felt the full weight of what had transpired crashing down on me, leaving me shaken and trembling with fear. But amid the chaos and terror, one thing remained clear. I was alive, and I owed my life to Jonathan's quick thinking and bravery. In the days that followed, I struggled to make sense of the horrors I had witnessed. Haunted by nightmares of Ivan's sinister grin, and the glint of his deadly knife. But with each passing day, the memories began to fade, replaced by a newfound sense of gratitude for the precious gift of life. I never saw Ivan again, and for that, I am eternally grateful. But the scars he left behind will always serve as a reminder of the darkness that lurks in the shadows waiting to strike when we least expect it. And though I may never fully understand why I was targeted by such a malevolent force, I am determined to live each day with courage and resilience, knowing that I am stronger than the horrors that once threatened to consume me, bent down to retrieve it. To his horror, pulled out of the muck was not a tent pole, but a human bone. Panic surged through him as he realized the implications of his discovery. With trembling hands, he brushed away the mud to reveal a skeletal hand. Its fingers curled as if grasping onto something in desperation. His friends gathered around him, their expressions a mix of shock and disbelief as they stared at the grisly scene before them. Without a word, they began to dig, their hands scrabbling through the mud in search of more bones. And as they dug deeper, their worst fears were realized. Buried beneath the mud were the remains of a human body, its bones scattered and broken, as if torn apart by some unseen force. The realization sent a chill down my cousin's spine as he stared at the remains, his mind reeling with horror and disbelief. With trembling hands, he reached for his phone, his fingers fumbling over the screen as he dialed 911. He relayed their location to the dispatcher, his voice shaking with fear as he described the grisly discovery they had made. When the police arrived, they cordoned off the area, their faces pale as they surveyed the scene before them. It was clear that this was no ordinary camping trip gone wrong. This was a crime scene, a place where a life had been brutally taken and discarded like trash. As my cousin and his friends were questioned by the authorities, they struggled to make sense of what they had found. Who was the unfortunate soul whose remains they had stumbled upon? And what had led to their untimely demise in the heart of the wilderness? To this day, the mystery remains unsolved, the truth buried beneath layers of mud and lies. But one thing is certain, my cousin's camping trip 
will forever be remembered as a nightmarish descent into the darkest depths of the human psyche. A journey that left them scarred and shaken to their core. And as they returned home, haunted by the echoes of their ordeal, they knew that some secrets are better left buried in the depths of the forest, never to see the light of day again. Human remains hidden beneath the surface of the bog. The thought sent a shiver down my spine as I listened to his recounting of the harrowing experience. Despite the passage of time, the memory of that fateful camping trip still haunts my cousin and his friends. A dark cloud looming over their lives, like a specter from the past. They may never know the full extent of what they stumbled upon that night. The secrets hidden beneath the murky depths of the bog. But one thing is certain. The wilderness holds many mysteries. Secrets buried deep within its heart. Waiting to be uncovered by those brave enough to venture into its depths. And as I ponder the chilling tale my cousin shared with me, I can't help but wonder what other horrors lie hidden in the shadows, waiting to be revealed to those who dare to seek the truth. And heading back out to his car, my heart raced as I watched him through the window, his movements quick and purposeful. Without a second thought, I slammed the car into gear and peeled out of the gas station, my tires screeching on the pavement as I raced back onto the road. The adrenaline surged through me as I glanced in the rearview mirror, half expecting to see the man chasing after me. But to my relief, he remained at the gas station, disappearing from view as I sped away into the night. For the rest of the drive home, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that clung to me like a shadow. Every shadow seemed to hide a potential threat. Every passing car, a potential danger. It was as if the events of that night had shattered my sense of security, leaving me hyper aware of the dangers lurking in the darkness. When I finally arrived home, I bolted the doors and windows, my hands shaking as I recounted the events of the night to my girlfriend. She listened with a mixture of concern and disbelief, her eyes widening with every detail I recounted. In the days that followed, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had narrowly escaped a brush with danger, that the man at the gas station had sinister intentions lurking behind his manic smile. And though I may never know the truth, of what his intentions were that night. I vowed to always trust my instincts and stay vigilant against the dangers that lurk in the darkness. Home, I was shaken by the eerie encounter and couldn't shake the feeling of dread that lingered in the air. The memory of the dark figure in the abandoned phone booth haunted me, their eyes burning into my mind a sinister specter from the shadows. As I stumbled inside my house, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief wash over me. The familiar surroundings offered a semblance of safety in the wake of the unsettling events that had transpired on that desolate stretch of road. For days afterward, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. The memory of those piercing eyes following me wherever I went. I found myself constantly glancing over my shoulder, half expecting to see the dark figure lurking in the shadows, waiting to pounce when I least expected it. In the weeks that followed, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had narrowly escaped a brush with something sinister, something beyond my comprehension. The memory of that night would linger with me, a constant reminder of the dangers that lurk in the darkness, waiting to ensnare unsuspecting victims in their web of 
terror. And as I lay awake at night, haunted by the memory of those piercing eyes staring back at me from the darkness, I couldn't help but wonder what other horrors lurked in the shadows, waiting to reveal themselves to those brave enough to venture into the unknown, blocked number breathing heavily on the other end. I changed my number multiple times, but the calls always seemed to find me. I never had any proof it was the same person, but the feeling of being watched never went away. It wasn't until I moved to a new city and took extra precautions with my security that the calls finally stopped and the feeling of being followed began to fade. Looking back on those terrifying experiences, I can't help but feel grateful for the safety measures that were put in place to protect me. But even now, years later, the memories still linger. A constant reminder of the darkness that lurks in the shadows, waiting to strike when we least expect it. And as I sit here, recounting these chilling tales, I can't help but wonder how many other people out there have experienced similar horrors. How many lives have been forever changed by the sinister forces that lurk in the night, waiting to prey on the unsuspecting. But one thing is for certain, no matter how terrifying the darkness may be, there is always hope, hope for safety, hope for protection, and hope for a brighter tomorrow where the shadows hold no power over us. And as long as we remain vigilant and stand together against the forces of evil, we can overcome even the darkest of nights. And during that time, I had my fair share of eerie encounters. One particularly unsettling incident happened while I was driving alone on a remote stretch of highway late at night. It was one of those desolate roads that seemed to stretch on forever with nothing but darkness and the occasional flicker of a distant streetlight. As I was driving, I noticed a figure standing on the side of the road up ahead. At first, I thought it might have been a hitchhiker, but as I got closer, I realized it was something far more sinister. The figure appeared to be wearing tattered clothing and was hunched over with its back to me. As I approached, I felt a sense of dread wash over me. Something about the way the figure stood there, unmoving and silent, sent chills down my spine. I slowed down as I passed, trying to get a better look. But the figure remained still, not even acknowledging my presence. I couldn't shake the feeling of unease as I continued down the road. It was as if I could sense something lurking in the darkness something malevolent and otherworldly. I couldn't help but glance nervously in my rearview mirror, half expecting to see the figure following me, but there was nothing there. When I finally reached the next town, I pulled over at a gas station and tried to shake off the feeling of dread that had settled over me. I couldn't help but wonder what I had just encountered on that lonely stretch of highway. Was it just my imagination playing tricks on me? Or was there something truly sinister out there in the darkness? To this day, I still can't explain what I saw that night. But one thing is for certain. I'll never forget the feeling of terror that gripped me as I passed by that mysterious figure standing on the side of the road. A silent sentinel in the night. I was navigating, so I pulled out my map to see how far we were from the next town. It looked like we were still quite a ways off. And with this guy tailing us, we weren't sure what to do. We decided to try to lose him by speeding up. But every time we did, he would match our speed. After several tense minutes of this cat and mouse game, we finally saw a turnoff up ahead. 
There was a dirt road that seemed to lead off into the desert. Without hesitating, Amy swerved onto the road, and we sped off into the desert, kicking up a cloud of dust behind us. We drove for what felt like hours, navigating the maze of dirt roads, all the while keeping an eye out for any sign of the white pickup truck. Eventually, we found ourselves in a secluded canyon, surrounded by towering rock formations and the eerie silence of the desert. Feeling somewhat safer now that we were off the main road, we stopped the car and got out to catch our breath. As we stood there, taking in the surreal beauty of our surroundings, we heard the distant sound of an engine revving. We froze, listening intently as the sound grew louder and louder. Then, suddenly, the white pickup truck came roaring into view, skidding to a stop just a few yards away from us. The driver jumped out, a wild look in his eyes, and started shouting at us to get back in the car. Terrified, we scrambled back into the car and tore off down the dirt road. The pickup truck hot on our tail. We drove like mad, swerving around tight corners and dodging rocks and boulders in our path. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, we saw the lights of a town twinkling in the distance. With a surge of relief, we raced toward it. The white pickup truck disappearing into the darkness behind us. When we finally reached the safety of the town, we pulled over and sat there, shaking and trying to catch our breath. We never did find out who the man in the pickup truck was or what he wanted with us, but one thing was for sure. We would never forget the terror of that night on the remote highways of New Mexico. Swerve back and forth us off the road. Amy kept her grip on the wheel, her knuckles white with tension as we dodged his erratic maneuvers. The old beat-up truck was right behind him, blocking any chance of escape. We were in a panic, our hearts pounding in our chests as we desperately searched for a way out of this nightmare. Suddenly, Amy spotted a turnoff up ahead dirt road leading off into the desert. Without hesitation, she veered off the highway and onto the dirt road, kicking up a cloud of dust behind us. The white pickup truck followed, its headlights piercing through the darkness as it pursued us into the desert. We drove for what felt like hours, navigating the maze of dirt roads all the while keeping an eye out for any sign of our pursuers. Eventually, we found ourselves in a secluded canyon, surrounded by towering rock formations and the eerie silence of the desert. Feeling somewhat safer now that we were off the main road, we stopped the car and got out to catch our breath. But our relief was short-lived as we heard the distant sound of engines revving we froze, listening intently as the sound grew louder and louder. Then, suddenly, the white pickup truck came roaring into view, skidding to a stop just a few yards away from us. The driver jumped out, a wild look in his eyes, and started shouting at us to get back in the car. Terrified, we scrambled back into the car and tore off down the dirt road pickup truck hot on our tail. We drove like mad, swerving around tight corners and dodging rocks and boulders in our path. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, we saw the lights of a town twinkling in the distance. With a surge of relief, we raced toward it, the pickup truck disappearing into the darkness behind us. When we finally reached the safety of the town, we pulled over and sat there, shaking and trying to catch our breath. We never did find out who the men in the pickup trucks were or what they wanted with us. But one thing was for sure. We would never forget the terror of that night 
on the remote highways of New Mexico. In conclusion, these accounts shared here are chilling reminders of the unpredictability and dangers that can lurk in seemingly ordinary moments or remote locations. From encounters with sinister strangers to eerie experiences on desolate roads, each story underscores the importance of staying vigilant and trusting one's instincts. Whether it's navigating through dark, unfamiliar territory or facing unexpected threats closer to home, these narratives serve as cautionary tales, urging us to remain aware of our surroundings and take necessary precautions to ensure our safety. While these stories may leave us with a lingering sense of unease, they also highlight the resilience and quick thinking of those who found themselves in perilous situations. By sharing their experiences, they shed light on the importance of preparedness, awareness, and the strength to act decisively in the face of danger. May these accounts serve as reminders to stay vigilant, trust our instincts, and prioritize safety in all our travels and encounters. Let us heed the lessons learned from these tales and strive to create a world where such eerie encounters become rare exceptions rather than unsettling realities. <laughs>